and welcome to Prime Business. Coming up, economist Dr. Patrick Assuming advises government to be measured in responding to rating agencies as Fitch wants Ghana risk further downgrades to default status. I think it means that, you know, more uh, drastic measures are needed to, in terms of addressing the expenditure issues as well as uh, bringing in more revenue lines. Also, economist Courage Buti supports government statistician as he cautions that it's too early to conclude inflation has peaked. I agree with Professor Nim um, on his assertions and the reasons I believe are spot on. The trends in the data uh, are actually at a point now where you can't conclusively say that we've reached a peak. Plus, civil society organizations in energy sector backs call for local contractors to be involved in the relocation of the Ameri power plant to the Ashanti region. We'll tell you why. Uh, we actually imported $2.7 billion. So if you look at it, you think Ghana is a net exporter. But our component out of the $3.9 billion was $500 million. Uh, $500 million. My name is Beverly Broom. Please stay for details. Welcome. Rating agency Fitch has indicated that it will not hesitate to downgrade the Ghana's credit worthiness to default status. That's if the country's finances does not improve soon. This was captured in the agency's latest report on Ghana's credit assessment. George Riafe has the details. This is one of the scenarios captured in the agency's report on Ghana in terms of the way forward when it comes to the country's credit ratings. It indicated that Fitch will respond accordingly if the country's finances worsens due to slippages or let's say worsening debt market conditions. Fitch was also quick to add that it will not hesitate to move Ghana into an improved position should the country's finances improve. The latest verdict on Ghana by Fitch is more of a warning to investors of the likelihood that the Ghana government could default on its bonds when the payment dates are due, due to the current challenges it is having with its finances. Now this warning is required because these investors depend on the report by Fitch to participate in Ghana bonds. A careful look at the report showed that Fitch was also worried that closing an IMF deal by the second quarter of this year could be under threat. That is, if government is not able to present a credible plan on dealing with Ghana's debt situation after IMF placed Ghana on high risk of debt distress for last year. Ghana is also due to make some $2.7 billion payment to investors before the close of this year. And there are concerns that looking at its current financial position, it might struggle to do this. For some, the biggest challenge is how this will impact negatively on private firms in the country that might want to go to the international market to raise some funds. Meanwhile, economist Dr. Patrick Assuming has advised government to be measured in responding to rating agencies that have downgraded Ghana's economy. According to him, the assessment of the economy is conducted in good faith to help countries put in measures for economic recovery. This, this has come on the back of uh, just recently we, we've uh, reviewed the media budget where we provided an update on our fiscal positions. Obviously, the rating agencies haven't found that to be very impressive at all. So I think it means that, you know, more uh, drastic measures are needed to, in terms of addressing the expenditure issues 
as well as uh, bringing in more revenue lines. Yeah, uh, GAPES response uh, to SMP was to tout the bold measures it has taken recently to raise revenue and cut down on expenditure. I bet it's still their response to Fish's downgrade. Uh, is that a good response enough, if you like, uh, to uh, this recent assessment? The, 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 the posturing when government responds by criticizing is not helpful. I mean, what you know, you, so what the what the the last response by the finance ministry was just recapping the measures that the retail agencies are already seen. Their message was that this is not enough. This doesn't impress us. So instead of you know you know responding and repeating exactly what they already know, I think the government would have been better served um, indicating that they are going to redouble their efforts to fix you know, to improve the fiscal situation rather than go on that trajectory of criticizing. Now, yesterday, the status quo service released the July inflation figure of 31.7%. However, the rate of increase has slowed down over time. Some analysts have suggested that we have reached the peak. But government statistician Professor Samuel Kobna Ainim says it's too early to reach that conclusion. Between May and June 2022, we saw a 2.2 variation, and now we are recording a 1.9 variation between June and July um, 2022. I think it will be early days for us to say that it's peaked, and I think it will be early days for us to say that the variations on a month-on-month -month from between two months for year-on-year -year inflation is also showing a decline. Although, admissibly, we are seeing that between March and April 2022, we saw 4.2, and now we are seeing 1.9. Why we say it's early days is that if you pay attention to the, the disaggregations, last month we saw that the contribution of food inflation really dropped by about 2.1 percentage points, and non-food inflation was driving it, and now we are seeing a reverse of that. So at the level of the at the level of disaggregation, we've seen a lot of variations in terms of what is driving it. So at this stage, it's difficult for one to pinpoint what is really driving the 4.2 that variation that we saw between March and April 2022, and the 1.9 variation that we are seeing between June and July 2022. So we would hesitate to say that we've peaked and we're going to see a drop, but we're going to monitor and see what happens in August, September, and see whether we have some discernible patterns to enable us to say that we've peaked and we're going to see a decline uh, moving forward. With the current trend of the inflation rate, economist with GCB Capital, Courage Buti, has supported assertions that it is too early to conclude that inflation has peaked at 31.7%. He argued that with the depreciation of the city and Ghana's reliance on import, inflation may still see an upward trend at a lower rate before peaking. I agree with Professor Nim um, on his assertions and the reasons I believe are spot on. The trends in the data uh, are actually at a point now where you can conclusively say that we've reached a peak. I must say that what in statistics you call a point of inflection is more appropriate now because the slope of the curve seems to have slowed down. The rate of increases on a monthly basis have slowed down. Yes, um, he's right. From April thereabout, we've seen the monthly rate of increase slow from some 4.2% in April to 4% in May to 2.2% in June and now to 1.9. Clearly, it's on a decline. So you can say that the rate of increase has slowed down. You look at it on a month-to-month -month basis, uh, from April, uh, uh, food inflation declined from 4.2% change to 3.5 to 0.6 in June, which was quite significant. But then in July, you see a climb again above the 0.6, now to 1.6. And the reverse happened for non-food where it declined from 4.3, increased to 4.4, decreased to 3.4, and now 2.2. Uh, so there is no clear discernible trend at this point in time to say that inflation has peaked. And if anything at all, the recent spate of depreciation and it passed through to general prices. And the fact that even if crude oil prices are declining on world market, uh, exchange rate is a big part of the determination of export prices. And then to the extent that exchange rate pressures remain, it could even erode the gains on crude oil prices and, by extension, 
uh, would actually keep fuel prices at the pump elevated. And then there is this more matter of um, uh, the utility tariff review that has been deferred, its implementation deferred, coming to stream, I believe, next September. All of these are price pressures. And so I believe it's early days yet to anyone to start jumping that inflation has peaked. But there are signs that it's approaching a peak. Now away from that, the Alliance of Civil Society Organizations working on extractive anti-corruption and good governance is supporting calls by the African Center for Energy Policy that a contract for the relocation of the Ameri Power Plant from the Western region to Kumasi must be on competitive bidding with local participation. According to the Alliance, this will help reduce the cost of relocating the plant, which is expected to stabilize power supply to the Middle Belt. There's more in the following report. The decision to relocate the Ameri Power Plant to the Ashanti region is to support the effort by government to stabilize power in the Middle Belt of the country. Addressing journalist in Accra, member of the Alliance Samuel Bequin called on the Minister for Energy to consider other options on the table before going ahead with the current deal. He believes there are other sustainable and cheaper ways to improve power supply in the area than moving the Ameri plant. We are saying that review other options which we believe some of the other options may be cheaper than the relocation that you want to undertake now. So that is what we wanted to say about that. Number two, whether um, the contract has not been signed. In, I think just in July, the minister went to parliament and indicated their intention to give the contract to Mytilenius. And it's quite clear in parliamentary hands that. The group believes governments can use other state agencies like the Volta River Authority and the Grid Code to carry out the exercise to save costs. It has come to our attention that even the VRA Senior Staff Association had also petitioned the minister to allow VRA to operate and manage the plant in the national interest on the account of their established capacity and technical know-how. They are technical know-how in hydro, they have capacity in thermal, which is heavy duty, and solar power generation as well. We understand that GRA currently manages more complex combined cycle turbines and thermal plants. We have the Abwazi and the Tema power generation enclave, which is all managed by GRA. Specifically, we know that the Abwazi power complex, where TAPCO T1 and TICO T2 run, is managed by VRA. The contract sum is also expected to decline if the process is taken through competitive burden to select the best company. The Bank of Ghana has assured that the introduction of its digital currency will not lead to the collapse of mobile money payment systems. According to the regulator, it would rather enhance such transactions. Here's more in the following report. Speaking at a stakeholder forum on the impact of central bank digital currency and future of digital payment, Assistant Director of Fintech and Innovation at Bank of Ghana, Clarence Blay, pointed out that the central bank is committed to protecting the business of mobile money services. Even those people who are responsible for mobile money are saying that they are waiting for the ECD because it will help them in cost reduction, it will facilitate efficient settlement, of their transactions and reduce reconciliation charges and enhance the integrity of payment service provision in this country. What again can we say? When those people that you are concerned about, they themselves are praising what the central bank is doing. That means that I don't have much to say in that direction. This is a very good thing and let us all support. And I said that for the central bank, one of the critical uh, guiding principle of this ECD project is complementarity. The ECD is going to complement what is already in place and enhance it and also is going to be interoperable with the existing system. So it's not going to supplant any other system that is in place. It's going to make them vibrant, more efficient and push the space forward. 
the chief executive officer of Mobile Money Ghana Limited, Elihini, also allayed fears that the central bank digital currency or ECD will have a negative impact on Momo. He further noted that the ECD will rather improve the efficiency of settlement and enhance the activities of mobile money platforms and further promote cross-border trade. Three things that immediately would add value to the mobile money ecosystem. I talked about settlements. Today, our settlement cycle takes um, a bit of time, but with ECD and its proper implementation, it will address that problem and improve on the efficiency of settlement. So we don't have to hold or tie up money waiting for a settlement to happen before we can have value. The second one is our agents today, if they want to do rebalancing or, uh, of their float, have to carry fiscal cash to the bank to undertake that or vice versa. And this helps to address that and speeds up the process because um, now that he has an um, uh, ECD account, he can do that um, in, um, intervention and be able to move money quickly into his mobile money account or vice versa to execute transactions. And I talked about uh, cross-border trade. Our, our traders still carry huge sums of money. How can we improve upon that and reduce the, the risk of carrying physical cash? We see an opportunity there as well. So we, we look at it within those contexts. Though the exploration of the CBDC started as far back as 2019, the regulator says ECD is still in its pilot stage and the date for a full implementation of the initiative is not known yet. The Social Security and National Insurance Trust, SNIT, says it has made a 60 million savings after halting the printing of the SNIT biometric cards for members in 2018. The Director General of SNIT, Dr. John Oforitin Kwai, indicated the adoption of the Ghana card by institutions has been of tremendous benefit in its operations. He spoke at the SIT regional meeting of SNIT in Kumasi. The regional meetings of SNIT are aimed at sensitizing regional and district leaders of the Trade Union Congress about the scheme and the benefits offered to members to enable them plan effectively towards retirement. SNIT has currently merged the identity of more than 1.9 million Ghanaians to the National Identification Card. The Director General of SNIT, Dr. John Oforitinkrai, explains how the Ghana card has saved the cost of printing SNIT cards. The card printing alone was costing us about, uh, the card alone was costing about $7.1 uh, dollars, American dollars, that is $7.10. Um, so since, 20, since we stopped printing cards, uh, we've uh, signed on about, um, maybe call it some 1.2 million uh, uh, people. Uh, and then there are people whose cards have been lost and they've come and they needed it to be reprinted. And then there are uh, the, uh, the consumables that we use in printing the cards. The $7.1 was just the cost of the card at that time. So when you kind of work that mathematics, basically between when we stop printing cards and now, we, we've saved about some 60 million Ghana cities. Meanwhile, Deputy General Secretary of the Trade Union Congress, Joshua Ansa, has bemoaned the meager salaries employers receive, which he says is affecting their retirement benefits. As leaders of uh, the unions, we need to actually begin discussing enhanced salary. And I think this year will begin the journey of an enhancement of salaries. Until we do that, what we put in as our contribution will never really be the result of what we get when we retire. So as you get your employment letter today, you need to start thinking about your, your retirement. The forum was on a theme, understanding the value proposition of SNET, the role of organized labor as partners, and promoting the scheme among workers in Ghana. TUC chairman in Ashanti region, Daniel Amamfo Aqua, commended SNET for continuously engaging workers and leadership of the TUC. He encouraged employees to take keen interest in their social security contributions and check their SNIT statements periodically. Workers are supposed to make sure that their contributions are paid every month. If you are a worker, what you need to do is to make sure that at the end of every month, your contribution has been paid to SNIT. And it should be, it's not just, it's not just for a joke, it should be something very serious to every employer to know that at this end of the month, 
has my boss paid my SNET pension or my SNET contribution? Yes, if he has paid, then you don't have a problem. Everybody must take interest. I need to say what you guys report right to you. Let's still stay in the Ashanti region where private businesses in the region have been learning skills to offer better and enhanced services to their customers. Dubbed the Ashanti Business Clinic and Exhibition, businesses were offered a platform for connectivity, marketing and growth. The disruption in the business environment following the Russia-Ukraine war and COVID-19 necessitated the business clinic to ensure the recovery and build future resilience of the businesses. The private sector is seen as the engine of growth to drive the country towards consolidating its middle-income status. However, the shock caused by COVID-19 and the Russian-Ukraine conflict have had considerable impact on Ghanaian businesses. Executive Secretary of the Ashanti Business Owners Association, Charles Kusi Apiakubi, says the disrupted economic environment necessitated the maiden addition of the Ashanti Business Club clinic and exhibition. We thought we could create a platform to give businesses free consulting, free information on best practices on how they can grow their businesses. We know the, the dynamics in the environment now, so there's a need to recruit businesses with the right information, the right tool, to make them much more resilient to, to the system so that they can survive. During and after the lockdown, a number of companies adjusted their business models. This included layoffs and cuts in wages. Other businesses have had challenges accessing finance. Some financial institutions have, however, assured their constant support to affected small and medium-scale enterprises. Jerry Beidou is sales manager for SME Commercial Banking at FBN Bank Ghana challenges as we know in the SME space when it comes to financial support. So what we believe is that every institution needs that financial backbone to enable growth. What we do is that if you run with us or operate with us for about six months, we can look at your turnover and based on that advice, some level of overdraft for you, for you to support the growth of the business. To increase the efficiency of local farmers, agricultural company Crop Doctors plans to modernize farmers' agricultural activities. They are positive that the lives of people in rural communities will improve. We are here to modernize Ghanaian agriculture to create rural prosperity. So we are here with various implements for farming and we are targeting the middlemen. So the farmers who doesn't have much capital to afford the bigger machineries. Mona Lisa Frimpon reporting. Now, Managing Director of Passion Air, Samuel Atuhagan, has revealed that the airline is considering flying to WA twice on Fridays and Sundays. Airline, the airline currently flies daily from WA to Accra and vice versa. This follows an appeal made by the Upper West Regional Minister, Dr. Hafiz Sali, when some officials of the airline paid a catsy call on him. Joy News' Upper West Regional Correspondent Rafiq Salam reports from WA. Passion Air started commercial operations of flights to the Upper West Regional Capital in December last year, thereby bringing relief to travelers who hitherto have to spend over 13 hours traveling the over 600 kilometers by road. It started with three times weekly flights from Accra to Wa in Rutamale. After a couple of months, the patronage of passengers from Wa to Accra picked up and management of the airline has no option than to increase the flying times in Wa to daily flights. Accountable manager of Passion Air, Eddie Annan, accompanied by top rank managers of the airline, paying a KTC call on the Upper Australia Minister. Dr. Hafiz Bin Sali expressed his satisfaction over the near nine months of their operations on the Akrawa route. He, however, has some concerns on routing their operations through Tamale and Kumasi, a reason why he's in town to discuss with some business executives. So we want to see how we can help them boost up the, uh, the, the roads from here to uh, Accra, and also to ask them about coming from Kumasi to Wa and coming from Tamale to Wa. We started both, but they didn't look too well. 
know if you're going with five passengers, seven passengers, nine passengers, it's not even paying for the fuel. But they keep asking, so probably dialoguing with them, we might find some uh, way around it to resume that flight, those flights again. Dr. Hafiz bin Sali, on his part, appealed to the management of the airline to consider expanding their operations by flying twice on Fridays and Sundays. They have given come to save us from a lot of trouble. Traveling time from Wa to Accra has been reduced. Mm. You have to go to Accra and you have to spend about three, 13 to 14 hours. But now, just an hour and a half, mm. you are in Accra. An appeal that the managing director of Pachin Airline, Samuel Atuhegan, said they will quickly consider. Uh, we didn't expect it to, uh, uh, should I say, shoot up so fast. What do you want to do to expand the market? We intend to look into flying twice a day now. Uh, we, based on the discussion with the minister, we are going to look into flying at least on Fridays and Sundays twice a day and then uh, look into other days in the week where we can increase the number of flights. Reporting for Dwayne News, Rafik Salam. Wa. And that's how we end Prime Business. We have more news when you log on to myjoyonline.com. My name is Beverly Broom. We leave you with business news making headlines on the international front. Have a good evening.